Can you stand it? <laughs> Another old minister up here? Oh, my. <laughs> We're at an hour and a half now, I think, something like that. <laughs> well, some things never change. Rick and I had our own battles with bats. and pigeons as well but I think oh Rick, Rick loves it so I think he'll be doing it for another 775 years he's our Batman I was very glad that we heard from Joanne Beaumont uh, she was she was an incredible music leader in this congregation and I will say no offense to David, but I never, I never heard Joanne make a mistake. She never made a mistake in everything she played. It's just, it was perfect and wonderful. And thank you, David, for your ministry as well. This church sanctuary continues to be the place for adventures. All that has had to be done since the tornado, I can't imagine what all you've had to put up with. And as many of you remember back in 2004, <clears throat> uh, the enormous scaffolding which was here in the sanctuary that filled the whole space. And uh, I enjoyed kind of scrambling around up ladders following Dennis Dillon as he supervised what was going on. and. You could get way up there and you could look down into the chandeliers and count the bugs that were <laughs> that were inside. 175 years worth of bugs. <clears throat> so once again, uh, you had to move your worship into another space, uh, the gathering room. Uh, very much like the six months, six or seven months, whatever it was, uh, during the renovation in 2004 when uh, we met in the multi-purpose room downstairs. It was a, a crazy and exciting time. And I think it was a growth time for many of us, uh, meeting in a different space. Uh, we got to know each other a little bit differently. We met new people, all of us out of our comfort zones. Uh, no one in his or her assigned seat, as I see you are today. You know, and there wasn't quite as much room down there, so people got there early to get a seat for worship. An amazing idea. <laughs> and then we had to rearrange the chairs and uh, set up for the tables for Emmaus Cafe. Uh, it was a very good time, uh, except that same year saying goodbye to Joanne and then to Pam during those same months. We felt a little abandoned, but with Pam, that's turned out very well by God's mysterious and wondrous ways. Uh, today for me is really All Saints Day, uh, two weeks late. Uh, I stand here surrounded, as the book of Hebrews tells us, surrounded by this great cloud of witnesses. If I can get through it, just a short list. Ray LaSalle, Jeff Cook, Mel and Ruth Sussex, uh, Bob Toborg, Corrine McKee, Harvey Albee, Bud Werner, Jean Mathern, Jane Miller, as Jean mentioned, Dick Stanley, and so many, many others. They are living witnesses. They, they do not cease to speak to me and to us, to laugh with us, to encourage us. Bud is still cooking men's breakfast including his legendary monkey bread. <laughs> Bob, Bob Toborg is 
stopping by the office on Monday morning for a little sermon feedback. <laughs> Ah, yes. You know, the office has two doors. So when I heard him come in and ask Mardell if I was in, I was so tempted. But I never did. I never did. I faced the music. And, of course, Dick Stanley. Of this church's 175 years, one of the certain and steadfast rocks on which we stand. They are living witnesses, these and all those through 17 and a half decades, mostly names we don't know, who do surround us with their spirits. So this Sunday, right between All Saints and Thanksgiving Day, is a perfect time to celebrate this, this anniversary, giving thanks for all the saints, for all you saints. And it is also a perfect time in the spirit of thanksgiving for Liz and I to thank you, uh, dear friends, uh, for your welcome to us. We were actually newlyweds when we came here in, seven, in 95. Actually, I showed up for my first PNC interviews uh, with my girlfriend in tow. <laughs> we got married later. <laughs> At any rate, you are our family and our home. We do thank you. The Gospel reading is from the Gospel according to Luke, the 24th chapter beginning at verse 13, and you may find it in the New Testament, beginning on page 84. Now on that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus about seven miles from Jerusalem, and talking with each other about all these things that had happened. While they were talking and discussing, Jesus himself came near and went with them, but their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, what are you discussing with, with each other while you walk along? They stood still, looking sad. Then one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answered him, Are you the only stranger in Jerusalem who does not know the things that have taken place there in these days? He asked them, What things? They replied, The things about Jesus of Nazareth, who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before God and all the people, and how our chief priests and leaders handed him over to be condemned to death and crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one to redeem Israel. Yes, and besides all this, it is now the third day since these things took place. Moreover, some women of our group astounded us. They were at the tomb early this morning, and when they did not find his body there, they came back and told us that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but they did not see him. Then he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, and how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets had declared. Was it not necessary that the Messiah should suffer these things and then enter into his glory? And then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them the things about himself in all the scriptures. As they came near the village to which they were going, he walked ahead as if he were going on. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, because it is almost evening, and the day is now nearly over. So he went in to stay with them. 
When he was at the table with them, he took bread, blessed and broke it, and gave it to them. Then their eyes were opened, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, were not our hearts burning within us while he was talking to us on the road, while he was opening the scriptures to us? That same hour they got up and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and their companions gathered together. They were saying, the Lord has risen indeed, and he has appeared to Simon. Then they told what had happened on the road, and how he had been made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Thanks be to God.